All right, guys, thanks for coming. Um, so my name is Nate Jacobs, and I am on a mission of sorts to try to make uh, publishing uh, scientific discoveries as fun and exciting as the, um, the making the scientific discovery itself. Um, so this is a bit personal for me. I'm fairly new to this, to scholarly communication, um, but um, I spent most of my time as a systems neuroscientist, and I, you know, I love research, I love being in lab, um, but I got really frustrated with publishing. Um, you know, you, you make these scientific scientific discoveries and it's really exciting and you're, you're in the lab and you can you know, talk about it with other people in the lab and in other labs and then you get to the part where you have to you know turn it into the, the full project and and spend the you know couple years publishing the manuscript and um, that just really you know basically got to the point where I was like okay I need to, to work on scholarly communication to try to make that a little bit more interesting um, and so um, let's see here uh, and so the thing that I kind of kept coming back to and, and has grown stronger as I've you know talked with all the people in this in this community is um, I got really frustrated that you had to tell this huge big narrative in these manuscripts and there was no real good way to um, to just publish all these small things, the small moments in labs, <clears throat> and the, the, you know, the, I had all these little interesting findings, whether it was my thesis or in the postdoc, where um, it was really cool, but it was just this one little thing, and you couldn't, you know, you didn't have time to, to turn it into a whole big manuscript. Um, so, you know, everybody's going for the big fish on the left, or on the right there, um, and I think that's kind of the big problem, is that if everybody's just going for the big fish, that you, you have all these little fish that are really interesting, um, and could amount to, you know, an interesting school of, um, <laughs> I'm just coming up with that pun as I'm talking, <laughs> Findings. Um, so, um, so I'm also at the very beginning of this process. So um, I'm not sure if you guys were, you know, coming to this talk to expect me to have a bunch of answers, but uh, we're actually going to do a little uh, experiment quiz thing um, to basically um, have you guys help me find out some of these answers. So, um, so, but just to kind of set it up, um, you know, basically one of the things that really frustrated me is that um, outside, if you take a step back and go outside of scholarly communication. Uh, you know, publishing small things is really fun. It's kind of driven a lot of um, really interesting innovations in, in other industries. So, you know, I love using all these platforms like Instagram, Medium, Twitter, uh, you know, even things like software and, and Wikipedia is a little bit closer to home. But in all of these things, you're um, creating uh, and structuring community interactions, uh, very small community interactions and small contributions in a really fun and engaging way. Um, and then as that, um, you know, as the community builds, you have these emergent properties and emergent narratives that evolve out of that. And so I have no idea how to do this in scholarly communication, but I want publishing the research discoveries to be as fun as using platforms like this. Um, you know, we're trying to, you know, get scientific progress out there so that we can, you know, you know, affect, affect you know healthcare outcomes and things like that. So, so the rapidity with which we can um, you know get the discoveries out there and, and disseminate them is is you know it, it does hit hit home pretty hard for you know if you think about the larger implications. So, um, yeah. So basically, we have time for questions now, or if people want to uh, you know kind of just say what their thoughts are on how to um, you know increase the rapidity of, of communications or micropublications. That's kind of the the general theme we're hitting on here. Um, so, we can this one? Yeah. so you started with one slide on incentives, and the second slide showed some existing micro publication systems, yeah. Twitter, Instagram. Mm -hmm. So I would argue these systems already exist. What's the difference between a micro blog and a micro publication? And mm -hmm. in my mind, in the scholarly com communication field, the answer should be some level of peer review which also leads back then to the incentive mm -hmm. uh, question, because only if there's peer review, there will be like incentives in terms of promotion and tenure. So mm -hmm. how do you see that in the micropublication? Or, and or how do you define, like, do, would you agree with my definition on what's the difference between a microblog and a micropublication? Yeah, Is that yeah. peer review, or do you have a different definition? Yeah, I think, no, I think peer review, and then also, um, um, you know, some people don't like to think about this, but yeah, the idea of like, uh, not prestige, but like how things float to the top uh, is, is important. You need to, there's so much volume of content in science that you need to know what to trust and what to look for. Um, there are other platforms like Stack Overflow that have mechanisms for, it's not quite the same peer review that we do, but it's still community driven peer review. So I think um, what I'm really interested in is starting with something where you can instantly publish, um, but then you have post-publication peer review where you can have mechanisms for having certain things flow to the top and, and, and assess the trustworthiness of something. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're still all trying to figure this out right now. 
Yeah, and so um, so this is the part that I'm struggling with, and I, 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 I basically believe that there is an answer to this. Obviously, there isn't uh, an answer right now, but um, it's the incentives, right? So these platforms exist, but researchers aren't using them because when they go to their tenure communities or whatever, um, they can't go in and say, look, I've you know shared these like 10 things, and they've, you know, you know there are these small things and that they can't. That, that doesn't have the same impact as I have a nature paper. So I, I don't know how to solve that, but, um, um, but I think there are a couple of avenues to start chipping away at that. I think these platforms tend to um, converge on the truth more quickly. Um, they obviously have you know, better implications for you know, you know, progress of science and things like that, but, um, but that's basically the problem that we're trying to solve. So, uh, so I don't have an answer. This is why I'm having you guys help me <laughs> fill in, because it's not an easy, yeah, not an easy question. Is that that kind of answers it, or no, yeah, or not? I, just, I mean, I was at that workshop yesterday we, where we talked about nano publications, mm -hmm. and I was kind of shocked that nobody raised that issue. Right, and there was no discussion about peer review. Right, so and I think I just want to point that out as, as a scholar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from a scholarly pu perspective, <laughs> I think these systems already exist. You can use them. You can post your figures on Instagram. You're not going to get credit for it. Why? Because it's not peer reviewed. Right? Yeah, and, that, and that, that is the missing piece right now, is the peer review part. So I, I definitely agree with you there. Um, um, yeah. But, but, but peer review doesn't have to look like how it does right now. It can be more automated and, and faster and streamlined and things like that. So, um, Do we have to pass to the next OK, one, one more question? OK. Who's raising their hand up the halls? <laughs> OK. Sorry, well, we can just with the peer review thought it seemed to me like as I'm watching you essentially be the peer reviewer for what we were doing our attempt at a big fish was a whole lot harder for you to peer review it took you longer to process that than individual little fish and so even the peer review process should be faster and easier and should have I would say better results in the peer review process as well if we're doing it in this smaller way yeah, exactly. And I think that's the other thing that frustrated me too with publishing is that when you when you're given a paper to review, a lot of times they're just too big for you to actually review, and there's so much trust involved that they're doing things correctly. Um, so if you have like a little micro publication, it's much more um, defined. There's less you know hand waving speculation at the end. You can r much more rigorously assess whether or not that little nugget of truth is you know trustworthy or not. Um, and then there's kind of this hope that if you put better um, content, better higher quality content into the system, then Hopefully that will lead to better, you know, larger discoveries down the road. So, but yeah, lots of open questions. All right, so I think we have to switch over. But 